7 Soundtrack Radio are going through the locations of Final Fantasy 7 Remake as you play your way through the game and the themes that you will hear from them from the original soundtrack. It is the Final Fantasy 7 Remake Location Special. The Final Fantasy 7 Remake Location Theme Special. Channel 107 Soundtrack Radio. Playing both the best original music from the game along with all new versions of the classic soundtrack themes from the Final Fantasy VII original. This is the Final Fantasy VII Remake Special. It's great to have the excuse to play anything from Final Fantasy VII. And this game got a big boost, didn't it, when it got a remake put together over so many years. It was finally released just in time for Global Lockdown in April 2020. That's an exclusive on the time on the Sony PlayStation 4. It's now also been released for Windows on the PC. Although that is going to need a hefty graphics card, as you can imagine. In Final Fantasy VII Remake, which was in development over a decade before it finally got released in April 2020, the dystopian but very vibrant world of the city of Midgar was brought to life on a truly epic scale. The original version of the game, which was first released in Japan in 1997 and then in North America and Europe in 1998, introduced us to a group of friends headed by Cloud Strife, who formed the Avalanche Resistance Group. They were an underground resistance group whose mission was to take on the mighty Shinra Corporation, who were based in the capital city of Midgar, a city that is divided into sectors 0 to 8, and that is sealed off from the sky by being placed in a giant dome where a huge metallic roof covering shields the city from the sky. So now in Final Fantasy VII Remake we get to explore the dark and dangerous but also hugely vibrant city of Midgar and its many sectors. We start off as Final Fantasy VII Remake opens with a view of the entire city which is laid out in perfect symmetrical sectors. The first one we drop into is Sector 8, which is where the Mako reactor that Avalanche wants to blow up is located. You see, the Shinra Corporation is mining the very life energy of the Earth, which is known as Gaia in the Final Fantasy VII world, and so Avalanche wants to destroy the Mako reactors. And so that's your first real experience in the game. We're going to play the theme to the Maka Reactor. Following this opening theme, or this location theme special, it doubles up as a theme for the whole city of Midgar and for Final Fantasy VII and the Final Fantasy VII Remake itself. Prelude, the Reunion. sounds orchestrated but there are also new realizations of some of Nobuo Yamatsu who was the composer pretty legendary he was of Final Fantasy 7 he's come back also to do a couple of new themes that play out also for some of the locations that you get reintroduced to when you play Final Fantasy 7 remake so we've started with that opening theme there this is the theme music for the bombing mission of that Mako reactor that you are thrown headfirst into when you open up a new game of Final Fantasy VII. And that 
is indeed what also happens in Final Fantasy VII Remake as well. Bombing mission. Between midnight and one on the first broadcast of this, on the first Sunday of June, this is the Final Fantasy VII Remake Location Theme Special. Here's how the original of that theme sounded back in 1998, the opening bombing mission. simple mission in the original game it is timed you've got to place the explosives and then get out of there and it's a little bit more complicated you're also introduced to some more side characters as well Biggs and Wedge they play a bigger role in Final Fantasy 7 remake and you get to know them more as characters compared to our exposure to them in the original for example in Final Fantasy 7 remake we find that Wedge has a cat and that actually appears in the Final Fantasy VII Remake graphics. The Mako Reactor.
original as the music used for the world map when you finally got out onto it when you got to leave Midgar for the first time. But in the remake, this is where you hear this music. The main theme of Final Fantasy VII, Sector Seven.
is a full orchestral suite and along with the menu theme the whole piece which serves as the music that you hear when exploring on the world map and going between location to location as you progress on your story and adventure with Cloud and his avalanche friends on the original. Final Fantasy 7 Remake is just known as Final Fantasy 7 Remake but really it is meant to be Final Fantasy 7 Remake Part 1 because the only part so far of the overall adventure that you experienced in the original Final Fantasy 7 in the remake has been the Midgar parts. All of that forms the overall sort of first chapter of the whole Final Fantasy VII adventure. And as of the broadcast of this radio show, the remaining parts to Final Fantasy VII Remake have not yet been released, but presumably they will take Cloud and his friends further out into the world beyond Midgar, with some interesting scenes and places hopefully being remade with today's amazing 4K quality graphics. So early on in the adventure, you actually get a bit more story about the characters that you go on the mission with initially to destroy that first macro reactor. There's Biggs, Wedge and Jesse. In particular, you get to know Wedge and Jesse much more in Final Fantasy VII Remake. And this part of the story, which is before you would in the original go to the Sector Seven slums to go to Tifa's bar or go to Sector Five to hang out with Aerith, you visit Jessie's house, which she shares with her parents, like so many of us. She's also located in Sector 7 slum. She wants to rob a Shinra company warehouse, and you are to help her do that. And why not? After all, you are against Shinra in this game. This is the atmospheric theme that plays as you do that. It's another original for Final Fantasy VII Remake. It's called Moonlight Thievery. Final Fantasy VII Remake, location special. Moonlight Thievery.
hear this theme early on in the game whenever you're doing a mission with your team. So you hear it quite early on as a result. It's the main theme for your Avalanche group, simply known as the Avalanche's theme. Next, on our Final Fantasy VII Remake Location Special, tonight on Late Night Classic Gaming Themes. Final Fantasy VII Remake Location Special on Late Night Classic Gaming Themes on 107 Soundtrack Radio. Avalanche is the probably plays during the next mission to destroy the next Mako reactor because there actually are several of them powering Midgar and after it explodes Cloud finds himself falling and he lands somewhere random in the Sector 5's slums and then sees the girl with the flower again she asks him if he wants to buy one of her flowers and she's outside the church in Sector 5. Cloud and Aerith get to know each other and she becomes one of the main characters in the story. Final Fantasy 7 Remake has a more embellished version of the original theme from Final Fantasy 7. It's called Flowers Blooming in the Church. Flowers Blooming in the Church.
just down and out areas when she introduces him to where she lives. She, there's this beautiful garden and this house which is off Petal Lane in the Sector 5 slums. It actually has a garden growing there underneath the metal plates and there's a waterfall which enables the plants and flowers to grow. And I would say this is one of the more atmospheric locations that you get to explore around as part of Final Fantasy VII Remake. And the gentle music suits that, but we'll get back to a more hard-hitting theme next. The Final Fantasy VII Remake Location Theme Special. Channel, Channel 107. Seven. Soundtrack Radio. Playing both the best original music from the game, along with all new versions of the classic soundtrack themes from the Final Fantasy VII original. This is the Final Fantasy VII Remake Special. Returns next. Hexton made it big at Easter on a four-day holiday weekend of special countdowns. Cream. And as I'm a fully grown adult, I didn't get a single egg. All Easter hits, but no Easter eggs. Cream. I did. Admittedly, it was thrown at me by some young lads with hoodies right up to their eyebrows. And in collaboration with 107 Soundtrack Radio, Cream presents a holiday weekend that is packed full of magical music favourites, movie Easter-themed comedy specials, and not forgetting extremely good Easter music with an Easter theme. Cream. Time to end the advert because I think they've got the point by now. Yes, this is the end of the promo. And I will stop talking like this and talk normally. Happy Easter from all of us at Cream Manworth. Cream, Cream Manworth. Every night at chart night on Cream Manworth between 10 and 11. The top 10 at 10. From Sundays to Thursdays, it's the Retro Star Chart. But on Fridays between 10 and 11, we give you a recap of the latest UK countdown. The top 10 at 10. Friday night, 10 p.m. until 11. Only on Cream Mammoth 99.7 FM. 107 Soundtrack Radio. Soundtrack Radio for Mammoth and the Southern North. The Final Fantasy VII Remake Location Theme Special. Channel, Channel 107 Seven. Soundtrack Radio. Playing both the best original music from the game, along with all new versions of the classic soundtrack themes from the Final Fantasy VII original. This is the Final Fantasy VII Remake Special. So now for a hard-hitting theme that serves as the main music for the Sector 5 slums. It's called Underneath the Rotting Pizza because it is almost completely located underneath the Sector 5 metal plate, which means that the slum doesn't even have an open view to the sky above. The Final Fantasy VII Remake of Nobu Matsu's classic theme from the original is even darker and more Sector 5 slums is where Ares' church is located, as well as her house, which is actually quite beautiful. There's also features like a foreboding cemetery and the part where lots of scrap is piled up that the locals try to sell. And it's called the Nuts and Bolts Hills. It's the rotting pizza, Sector 5 slums.
7 remake is set all in Midgar in the first part. A city divided by sectors and there are many interlocking corridors and passageways that take you quite deep underground into the murky depths of Midgar to navigate between some of the districts. In some of those parts you hear this bit of music which is always used to illustrate the depths of the underground passages through Midgar. Lurking in the darkness it's called. Lurking in the darkness. Suspicious man. but it really builds on the original quite well. Here's a bit of a clip of that, as it used to sound in the original soundtrack of Final Fantasy VII. So there's plenty of places through Midgar, especially when you're going between sectors. It doesn't seem to be main roads so much, or is it because group, which is what Avalanche actually are, you really do have to keep on the down low and not take things such as the uh, the subway transit system, the train system that is, or any main roads, which I can't even work out if they actually exist in Midgar. Taking you between the Sector 5, 6 and 7 slums you spend so much time in in the game is a twisty turny subterranean tunnel that contained a bypass that's now been cut off. The collapsed expressway for that reason. The area which you must explore involves more random battles, like loads of them, don't we? Having to work out slightly complex puzzles to get things out of the way by operating machinery. The collapsed expressway. Sector 7 slums again for a theme that doubles up as both 
Tifa's character theme and also the theme that you always hear in those scenes when you go into her bar that she's got in Sector 7 slums, which is called Seventh Heaven. The difference in Final Fantasy VII Remake being that you can't descend into the basement via the secret contraption that does it in Final Fantasy VII because Cloud in FF7 Remake's story is no longer welcome in Avalanche's headquarters. At least not yet, he isn't. Tifa's theme, Seventh Heaven. This next theme is a beautiful piece of music that is actually something that Nobuyu Uematsu added for the 2020 released Final Fantasy VII Remake. His new music is called Hollow Skies and it's sort of an unofficial main theme of Final Fantasy VII Remake. Geographically, it always plays in the Sector VII slums, which is where Tifa's bar is located, Seventh Heaven. Final Fantasy VII Remake location special. Hollow Skies, Sector 7 Slums.
some areas of Midgar, particularly Sector 7 slums. That music adds a lot of atmosphere, particularly if the scene is set at night, which sometimes it is. And that's what happens next. There's something special about Aerith, which is revealed later in the game, and Elmira, who is Aerith's mother, believes that having Cloud and the Avalanche company around her could be making her a target. Cloud and his Avalanche friends are staying in Aerith's house, and he agrees to leave secretly late at night so that Aerith won't miss him. But this doesn't go quite to plan because Aerith notices it and sneaks out after him. And she follows him to a place called Evergreen Park in the Sector 6 slums. And we get this rather atmospheric theme playing as this plays out in FF7 Remake, it's called Midnight Rendezvous. A new original theme, that's one of the few that has been made for the game and not remade from the original soundtrack, just like Hollow Skies. Midnight Rendezvous with Eric. Progresses to Wall Market, which lies beyond the Sector 7 slums. You encounter a group of badasses called Bex Badasses, which have nothing really to do with the main storyline, but a battle with them acts as one of the side quests you can play in FF7 Remake. It is a full on remake of the original Wall Market theme that plays as the music for these scenes in FF7 Remake. Wall Market, the oppressed Bex Badasses.
here's how it compares. Don Caneo and the first thing you have to do in war markets as part of the main storyline is to find her one of the methods used is cloud dressing up as somebody that he would be using in the brothel shall we say it is another location located under the plate and it is the main centre of uh, of the prom's entertainment with lots of seedy businesses and there are things like casinos for gambling Don Caneo's brothel and uh, places of fights but also general item shopping and supplies so it's a colourful district and it's very well embellished and brought to life in Final Fantasy 7 Remake so much is packed into the remake area of War Market particularly in Final Fantasy 7 Remake it now has a new original theme of its own in Final Fantasy 7 Remake's soundtrack which is called quite aptly The Town That Never Sleeps War Market The Town That Never Sleeps Seven remake location special. Now it's time to hear the music of the main man you're after himself, Don Corneo, the pimp of the slums. This has a more orchestrated version of the classic theme we knew from the original Final Fantasy VII, and here it is, Don Corneo of the slums.
they soon move from Don Caneo's mansion, where you do manage to break Tifa out. In a later visit to find Don Caneo again, he imparts some information. The Shinra company is planning to drop the Sector 7 plate in an attempt to wipe out your group Avalanche, but that will crash down on top of the Sector 7 slums. In a commotion with Don Caneo, Cloud, Aerith and Tifa fall together into the sewers beneath Wall Market and Don Caneo's mansion. This area is where another original new piece of soundtrack music penned by Nobu Matsu plays, and it's a good one, it's one of my favourites. It really conveys that murky atmosphere. Simply put, they have to fight their way and explore their way out of the Sector 6 sewers to find their way back to the Sector 7 slums. And this theme known as Rough Waters will be your soundtrack as you attempt to do it. Rough Waters, the Sector 6 sewers. in places like that is when the light goes. And there's a bit of a puzzler element to the gameplay as you have to work out how to restore the power in one part of the sewer where you have to work out the combination that a series of pretty confusing switches all need to be on for the lights to come on. Actually, most sewers don't have lights, do they? And you'll have to bring your own source of light, power and energy into them. During this particularly creepy section of the gameplay, another theme plays which is not included on the official soundtrack. It is an eerily, almost inaudible version of the previous theme perhaps, although it's hard to tell that. Here's a recording of it that we'll play for the last part of the first hour of this Final Fantasy VII Remake Location Special that we're doing for you tonight on Late Night Classic Gaming Themes on 107 Soundtrack Radio. Sling Basin Corridor, the unlit passages in the Sector 6 sewers.
Generation Theme Special. Channel One Seven Soundtrack Radio, playing both the best original music from the game, along with all new versions of the classic soundtrack themes from the Final Fantasy VII original. This is the Final Fantasy VII Remake Special. So welcome back to the Final Fantasy VII Remake Location Theme Special. So the group have made their way through the creepy sewers and things are about to get even creepier before they can get back in the Sector 7 slums to try and desperately save the place. You now, Cloud, Tifa and Aerith have to pass through an area called the Train Graveyard which you have to also navigate your way through abandoned carriages which are blocking your path. The place doesn't just feel eerie. The spirits that are there become overt and become actively hostile towards your group. This is another of several locations that have their own brand new music and not a remake of one of Nobuo Matsu's classic themes from the original Final Fantasy VII soundtrack. Just like Rough Waters, a new theme for the wall market and the theme for Avalanche that we've already heard earlier in this special. Train Graveyard. It's one of those annoying places where you've got to figure your way through by solving some, what to some people are probably basic puzzles, but not to me whenever I play a game like that. That's the original theme from Final Fantasy VII Remake for the Train Graveyard. So you get back to the Sector Seven slums, unfortunately, despite your best efforts, you cannot stop a member of the Turks releasing the plate and making it crash devastatingly on top of the Sector Seven slums. Luckily, though, like in the original, Wedge is not killed and he manages to even find his cat who has gone missing somewhere in the, the ruined Sector 7 slums. That's good. And this music you can hear behind me now is the theme that played in the original for this section of the game. It's also the theme that they use for Cloud's hometown of Nibelheim, which is on the Western continent. The next theme is the next location. The gameplay now takes you to the Shinra building, only after you've ascended what is a lot of very, very high elevated platforms. Originally, this section was called the Shinra Rope, as you had to navigate things like cables and pipes to ascend to where the Shinra building is. And this is a version of the main theme for the Shinra Electric Power Company that you are pitting yourself against. It's the music that plays when you see the sh gigantic Shinra building, which has, I think, 69 floors, with 70 
being the roof of the Shinra building. original it was the way that you had the choice of either busting in or going up the stairs to sneak your way into the Shinra building it felt a lot more espionage like and a lot more atmospheric to do that you would think that as you did so in the Final Fantasy 7 remake that the same music would play so even though there is a modernized version of the same theme that played in the original version as you ascended about 50 plus floors by painstakingly climbing the staircase. It even feels tiring to do it on a video game. Strangely, this music doesn't play whilst you're there, but it is present in the Final Fantasy VII Remake soundtrack. It only plays when you get to the top and then decide to have a look back in the staircase, which I guess few players would ever choose to do that. But if you do, you will hear a fresh new version of the original infiltrating Shinra headquarters theme. Final, Final Fantasy VII Remake Location Theme Special. Infiltrating Shinra Headquarters.
staircase of about 50 or more floors. This is how the original theme sounded in 1997, Homeland's Year 10, which is when the game was first released. Unsurprisingly, the Turks, which is a sort of CIA-type division, or FBI, or whatever it is, of the Shinra Corporation, they were the ones who uh, went out to capture Aerith. It's not surprising that they have an office within the Shinra building, and so you hear that theme again for that location. This is the main theme to the Turks. The Turks theme. Office. Ultimately, it leads to the same place it did in the original, busting out of the Shinra building and flying down the Midgar Expressway, which leads out of the city in Final Fantasy VII Remake, of course. The rest of the story isn't yet complete as of the time of making this radio show for you. And so, this is a prelude to the final bosses of the game along the Midgar Expressway. And that takes the form of being chased by aggressive motorbikes, but also, in Final Fantasy VII Remake, robotic vehicles as well that have one simple objective to stop you from getting out of the city down the Midgar Expressway. And so we have a more embellished version of that theme that we heard first in Final Fantasy VII. But in this one, it isn't just a remake of that theme. It also contains elements of some other classic themes as well, such as Hori, the escape theme, the general battle theme, and the boss music theme as well within this. So we're going to break it up by playing some of the new versions of that, alongside the way it appears as a rendition in this theme, and the classic versions of them as well to round off the show. The Midgard Expressway.
That's why they throw in these extra renditions within the theme of classic music, including this one, known as Hori. I termed it the escape theme, because that's always what you're trying to do whenever you hear it. Classic version from 1997. Here it is on the remake soundtrack of 2020. Expressway music packs in new renditions of the battle themes, which is called Fighting, and also the boss theme, which is called Still More Fighting. Copy of Final Fantasy VII, The Battle. There was 
so many random battles that you must have heard this hundreds if not thousands of times. for battle scenes so much but one battle scene in particular that it's the theme to in Final Fantasy 7 Remake because in Final Fantasy 7 Remake there are no random encounter battles that stop the action all the time and the exploring but instead they're simply on screen with you hence there isn't really a battle theme as such just themes for individual boss battles
station further along the Midgard Expressway with, with the motorbikes in hot pursuit of that boss battle music we heard so often as well in the original Final Fantasy VII. Here is that original theme. Final Fantasy VII Remake has a version of it that sounds very, very much more rocky than even this. Used for one battle sequence in Final Fantasy VII Remake. Final Fantasy VII Original. This is the Final Fantasy VII Remake Special. A couple of extra themes to play you to take you to the end of the hour on this FF7 Remake Special. The Final Fantasy VII Remake Location Theme Special. Channel, Channel 107. Seven. Soundtrack Radio. Playing both the best original music from the game along with all new versions of the classic soundtrack themes from the Final Fantasy VII Original. 
This is the Final Fantasy VII Remake Special. And this is one of Final Fantasy VII Remake's best new themes, but it is based on the classic war market theme only. It's now been made into an electronic music masterpiece. And this new version of the theme in FF7 Remake soundtrack is called Due Recompense. Due Recompense.
Easter themes for you. They make a lot more of Jessie's story than they did in the original. You even get to see her house and she accompanies you on many more missions in Midgar. This is the sentimental music that plays as her main theme in the Final Fantasy VII Remake soundtrack. Classic theme used for Aerith. It's a beautiful piece of music and it's even more embellished and orchestrated in Final Fantasy VII Remake's soundtrack. And it particularly plays around her beautiful home, which is actually located off an aptly named road called Petal Lane in the Sector 5 slums. And she has this garden with a waterfall in it, which enables the flowers to survive even underneath the plate, as I said earlier. Here it's the home again.
that's the last theme that we're playing tonight on the Final Fantasy VII Remake Location Theme Special. You can listen back on Mixcloud.com forward slash channel 107. Here is a more orchestrated version of the Game Over music featured in Final Fantasy VII Remake. Game Over. That was the Final Fantasy VII Remake Location Theme Special Channel 107 Soundtrack Radio Playing both the best original music from the game along with all new versions of the classic soundtrack themes from the Final Fantasy VII Original This is the Final Fantasy VII Remake Special Ident and production were by Michael Fanny It was a Channel 107 production 107 Soundtrack Radio. Soundtrack Radio for Manworth and the Southern North. Just beautiful songs. Every night on Cream from 11. From the most emotional power ballads of all time and just beautiful songs. Every night from 11 p.m. until 2 a.m. Late Night Cream becomes chill. Worth the northern heartlands and the outer belt, we have our own locally presented version of Chill between Sundays and Thursdays between 11 pm and 2 am. But if you want to hear Chill on Fridays and Saturdays, you can still find it on Cream Across the Southern North and also on our national Cream Homeland station. So there's never a night where you cannot chill. But if you want to stick with us live from Manworth on Cream on Fridays, we have Forgotten Gems between midnight and two, and on Saturday nights, classic soul anthems. The choice is yours. Cream in Manworth! Hexton made it big at Easter and a four-day holiday weekend of special countdowns. Cream. And as I'm a fully grown adult, I didn't get a single egg. All Easter hits, but no Easter eggs. Cream. I did. Admittedly, it was thrown at me by some young lads with hoodies right up to their eyebrows. And in collaboration with 107 Soundtrack Radio, Cream presents a holiday weekend that is packed full of magical music favourites, movie Easter-themed comedy specials, and not forgetting extremely good Easter music with an Easter theme. Cream. Time to end the advert because I think they've got the point by now. Yes, this is the end of the promo. And I will stop talking like this and talk normally. Happy Easter from all of us at Cream Manworth. Today on Country File, I speak to a traditional Yorkshire farmer to find out what Easter's used to be like in the good old days in the glorious British countryside. Oh, Easter... We don't celebrate that in Yorkshire. So, uh, how did you celebrate Easter in the farm? When I were a lad, Easter were a bit different like. It were only a good Friday if you managed to finish your haystack. I'm pretty sure there's no such thing as the Easter Bunny. If my dad spotted one of those, he'd have shot him dead on sight. Crop it in varmint, he said, bunny rabbits. Do you remember eating any Easter eggs when you were alive? Oh no, and you just know the only type of eggs that we saw around Easter in the farm were those laid by the chickens. And you can have as many of those as you want every Easter and you'll still have a full set of teeth in your face. Because those chocolate ones will rot them out of your mouth. Or did you used to have Easter Sunday off at least? Well we had to milk the cows and then go to church. Easter Sunday was an especially religious day. Church in the morning and church in the evening. There was not much to do around my way of a Sunday with everything closed. So sometimes when I were a bit short of something to do, I used to milk the cows again. On one Easter Sunday, I did it until the others went so dry, the milk had almost turned into a block of cheese. Oh, so that's as much as I can remember about my Easter's. Back in the good old days. And how do you celebrate Easter now? That were what it were like when I were a lad. 
and that was what it were like yesterday. I've done the same thing on a Sunday for the last 40 years. Now, if you'll excuse me, my cow won't milk itself. Help yourself to some egg yolk. And I've made some cheese biscuits from last Sunday. I think I just gave away my recipe. Oh no, I think the cows have gone a bit dry. So I think I'll go and read the Farmer's Gazette in bed. It's only five o'clock. Oh, see yourself out then. Watch out for the tractor. I've just muck spread in a field with it. I got sheep's doings all over the yard. Oh, hang on. This is an interesting article here. The makers of Worth's Originals have done their own Easter egg. I think I'm about to celebrate Easter for the first ever time. Because they're my favourite. Ooh, the Yorkshire Farmer. It's a good life production for Channel 107.